The next point that I want to talk about, which would be number five, is don't let other people run your life if you want to be happy. Yeah, I knew I was going to get some action on that one. You know, until we learn how to succeed at being ourselves, which means to follow your heart, not your flesh, your heart, which means to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Come on. The leadership of the Holy Spirit. We're never going to be really, truly happy. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul said, Now, am I trying to win the favor of men or of God? Do I seek to please men? If I were still seeking popularity with men, I would not be a bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, I would have, I would have lost this whole opportunity to be an apostle of Christ. And I can tell you right now, if I would have been trying to keep people happy, I sure wouldn't be standing here today in this ministry. It's amazing what we cheat ourselves out of, but what we also cheat everybody else out of. Because God has not only got something for you that will fulfill you, but he wants to use you to bring something to somebody else. And I probably would not be wrong if I said that the largest majority of people miss the fullness of their destiny. Because the one thing you can be guaranteed of that the enemy will bring against you is a threat of rejection if you dare to fully follow God. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Daniel chapter 3. Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, and the lyre, all those other instruments, bagpipes, and <laughs> every kind of music, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image which I have made good, but if you do not worship, you shall be cast at once into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who can save you? Now, Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were called into the king's service, not where they would have wanted to have been, but they were brought into his service. And in the midst of it, they were still determined to behave themselves as godly men. Now, to me, this is a great example of where we're at today, and I'm sure where other people have been at in every generation. Let me tell you something, that there is persecution for Christians. <laughs> now, if you're a sneaky Christian, a secret, hidden, Sunday morning Christian, then you might avoid the persecution. But if you're, if you're a full-on going to live for God, believer, then you're going to have some persecution in the world. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were given this message. Now here's an image of the king, and everybody's going to bow to this image. Well, they knew they couldn't do that because they weren't going to bow to anybody but God. And so here came the threat, which we always get the threats. If you don't bow down, there's going to be suffering for you. In this instance, that we're going to be put into the fiery furnace. For us, sometimes, is that you'll be put out of the group. We're no longer going to like you. We're going to gossip about you, you know, blah, 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. How many of you know what that means? All right. Number 16, Shadrach, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, it is not necessary for us to answer you on this point. In other words, that's so stupid, I'm not even going to answer it. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, he will deliver us out of your hand, O God. And it didn't mean like if he's able, if he's capable of it, but what that really means is if that's the best thing, if that's what God wants to do, 
he will deliver us. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. So in other words, you do what you want to, but we've decided to follow Jesus. You do what you want to, but I've got my mind made up. Boy, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and his facial expression was changed to antagonism. <laughs> you ever had anybody give you a dirty look? <laughs> Against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, therefore he commanded that the furnace should be heated up seven times hotter than normal. I love it. Boy, you stand your ground, you make a right decision, and the problems multiply. <laughs> and he commanded the strongest men in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the furnace. Now, I want you to watch carefully. And these three men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, or their undergarments, their turbans, and their other clothing, and they were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flames and the sparks from the fire killed those men who handled Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound. Everybody say bound. Bound. Boy, this is so good. I don't know if I can preach it. <laughs> they fell down bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Boy, they looked like they were in bad shape. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king saw and was astounded, and he jumped up and said to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered, true, O king. Verse 25, and he answered, behold, I see four men. Now here it comes. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, you're too early. I see four men loose. Three of them went in bound. The fourth man got in there with him, and he actually used what the king meant to destroy them to cut the bondages off of their life. Oh, man. Walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. Verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the furnace, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a message. There must be something different about you guys. You better come over here and tell us what it is. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire, and then the satraps, the deputies, the governors, the king's counselors gathered together and saw these men, that the fire had no power upon their bodies, nor was the hair of their heads singed, neither were their garments scorched, nor did they even have the smell of smoke. Now, number six, <laughs> thank you. If we're ever going to have any happiness, we've really got to understand the grace of God. And just to make it as simple as I can for the amount of time I have, Grace is not only God's undeserved favor, so that means instead of me spending my life trying to kick down doors that I want to go through, I can trust God to give me favor and open the right doors for me at the right time. 
Grace is what changes us. God's power. Grace is not only undeserved favor, it's God's power coming to us free of charge to enable us to do with ease what we could never do on our own with any amount of struggle and effort. That's my very own definition. You want it again? Yeah. Grace is God's power coming to us freely. All we need to do is receive it. And it enables us. Grace is enabling power. It enables us to do with ease what we could never do on our own apart from God with any amount of struggle and effort. I tell you, I tried so many years to change myself because I knew that, you know, I had problems. I tried to be happier. I tried to be peaceful. I tried to be a better person. I, you know, I tried and tried and tried and tried. And instead of it working, I actually was getting worse. Because the more frustrated we are, the worse we behave. And God began to teach me out of his word that it was only his grace that could change me. To make, it, to make a long story short, we're saved by grace. We get that. It's like, well, here I am, God. I, you know, I've done everything. If you don't help me, I'm done for. And we receive. We don't get salvation. I don't like the terminology, how many got saved. <laughs> We've had about 1,200 people receive Christ in this conference. You cannot get a free gift. <laughs> you receive free gifts. By grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the same way that we're saved is the same way we have to learn how to live. Now, grace is about a 20-part teaching series. And I've got about three minutes here for this section. So let me just tell you that any time that you feel frustrated, <laughs> it's because you're trying to do something that only God can do. Anytime you're frustrated, you're trying to do something that only God can do, and you need to stop and just say, okay, I've gotten over into works of the flesh, which is my energy trying to do God's job. I'm going to back off here, God. Help me. I need you to make this happen. Apart from you, I can do nothing. And then realizing that God doesn't do everything in our timing, nor the way that we would do it, so after praying, we then trust God and we watch him work. I finally stopped trying to change myself and lo and behold, I've been changed. You say, now wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you don't try to change yourself? <laughs> well, you just can't not try to change yourself. Well, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I pray every morning, Lord, set a watch over my mouth lest I sin against you with my tongue. Help me, Lord, not to get in trouble with my mouth today, and if you don't help me, I'm definitely going to get in trouble. <laughs> now, hang on. And here's how it works. I pray, and then the Holy Spirit reminds me. I'm going through the day. I'm busy going along. See, this is how the Holy Spirit's just with us all the time, and he works in our life, and I start, Dave says something, and I didn't care for it, and I say something back, and then he says something back, and then I get this little, like, <laughs> so I, I mean, okay, see, you get it, you know. Now, you know, maybe you're not quite where we're at, and you're like, what's she talking about? You get this. Well, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, and the Bible says in Romans 7, 6, 
that we no longer live by the law. We don't live by all these rules and regulations of how we have to behave for God to love us, but we now live by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So the truth is, if I make a hundred mistakes with my mouth today, God's still gonna love me, I'm still gonna go to heaven, but I want to do what's right because I love him. So instead of me going around saying, well, I, I'm just not gonna say anything today, that way I won't get in trouble. Because <laughs> see, all we know how to do is be extreme. I'm just not gonna talk at all and that way I won't get in trouble. And that doesn't work. We all know that. Amen. We might shut up for a while, but boy, when we open our mouth. <laughs> woo. But here's what you do. Instead of saying, boy, I can't do this today, and I can't do this, and I can't do this, and I can't do this, and I better not do this. You just get up and say, God, I want to be all you want me to be. Holy Spirit, I ask you to remind me if I'm about to get myself in trouble, then my part is, and we have a part, you have a part, but it's not like this fleshly effort. It's just a, it's a spiritual effort, but it's just the saying I want to cooperate with God. Okay, Lord, you're telling me to zip my lip, and if I don't, I'm about to start a fight with Dave, then I can just shut up. <laughs> you didn't get that? Was that hard? How many of you are understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, two quick things that were on my heart. First of all, I want us to look at 1 Corinthians 15, 10. The Apostle Paul said, but by the grace, the unmerited favor and blessing of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not found to be for nothing, fruitless and without effect. In fact, I worked harder than everybody, but it was not really me. It was the grace of God in me which did the work. Now, the, I mean, this could initially even sound a little confusing, but Paul is saying, look, I am what I am by the grace of God. But when God offered me his grace, I didn't take it in vain. I took that power of the Holy Spirit and I used that to do the things that God wanted me to be, do. Now, Paul's, okay, now here I am, I'm a successful apostle, but let me remind you that it's only because of the grace of God. And I can tell you today, I mean, honestly, when I come up here and I preach, and I've done this now for 40 years, but when I come up here and preach, I'm just like, it's almost like I'm somebody else. And, well, that probably doesn't make any sense, but it's like, I'm like, <laughs> because you see, when the, when the, Grace and the power and the anointing of God comes on you. The Bible says it turns you into another man or woman. We can do things by the grace of God that we cannot do any other way. But let me also tell you, when I come up here, I am not depending on me. Now, I've studied, I've worked. But even that, I need God's grace to keep doing. I've been doing this 40 years. This may be your first conference. It's not my first rodeo. <laughs> Amen? And just to want to keep doing it, just to stay fresh, just to have yet another message, just to stay in one more hotel, I need grace, grace, and more grace. So you got to depend on God all the way through. You could stop grumbling about your jobs if you would depend on God's grace every day when you go there. Ooh, I wish I had another day. And in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 9, I'm not going to take the time to go there, but let me tell you something. If you are in a difficult situation, you have a difficult child to raise, 
you are in a difficult relationship you're in a relationship with somebody that is really hard to be in a relationship with <laughs> anybody you're in a position where you're needing to take care of elderly parents and no matter what you do they don't like it <laughs> yeah <laughs> now I want you to listen to me any place where God has put you he will give you the grace wait 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 to be there and be happy while you're there <laughs> Paul prayed that God would deal with what the Bible calls the thorn in his flesh three times he called on the Lord and the Lord said I'm not going to remove it my grace is sufficient and the Amplified Bible says, my grace is sufficient to enable you to bear the trouble manfully. In other words, my grace can enable you to be in that situation and put a smile on your face and serve me and do it with a good attitude. But you're not going to get grace if you get up. I got to go to that stupid job again and driving this stupid traffic and I don't make enough money and I hate this job and I hate the people and you forget getting grace if that's going to but you get up and you say God this is where you've got me right now and I'm going to trust you that when you're done with me here you're going to put me somewhere else but in the meantime I'm going to go there by your grace with a smile on my face and I am going to represent you and I am going to glorify you Amen? That's what grace is. Grace doesn't just hang around to forgive my stupidity. It does that too. But grace enables me. And then I got to take just one more point here. Number seven, if you're going to be happy, there's four things you got to understand about people. <laughs> Number one, we need them. We just can't make it through without them. And God did it. He fixed us to where none of us have got it all. <laughs> They're not easy to get along with. That's the second thing you got to remember. Number three, most of the people that we deal with are not like us. And we're looking at them going, what is your problem? How could you like that? Why would you do that? And in dealing with people, we must not be touchy and easily offended. <laughs> but we must be extremely generous with forgiveness. Amen? Well, I know now you're wanting the rest of the points, right? Uh, I'm just going to read them to you really quick, really quick. Learn the power of prayer. Instead of trying to make things happen yourself, pray about them. Be positive and full of hope. Be thankful. Be obedient. And decide to be happy. Amen. Well, perhaps three of the greatest keys to happiness are gratitude, hope, and just learning to stay positive in every situation. You know, these things can go a long way in creating a happy life. They were a revelation to me personally, and they really helped to transform my attitude. I know that you really want to be happy. Who doesn't want to be happy? We all want to be happy.